Hello and welcome to the Property Roundup on iProperty Radio with myself, Carol Tallon, the show where we chat to industry experts to get a view on trends emerging across the property industry. And this show is brought to you in partnership with the Property District, your industry communications partner. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Roisin Cahill, CEO of Emerald Sage Property Buying Consultants. And uh, Roisin and her team at Emerald Sage help people buy property in the Republic of Ireland when they're located outside of the Republic of Ireland. Roisin, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be, to be on today, Carol. No, I'm, I'm absolutely delighted to chat to you. As I mentioned to you before we came on air, I'm a huge proponent of buyers agents and buyers having independent representation. I have been for decades. I, I'd love to see a buyer's agent in every town in Ireland because I genuinely think it's what's needed. Um, so look, I, I'm delighted to welcome you into the industry and into this this sector and onto the show today. So Roisin, you might just tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, have you a background in property? Um, I do. I do. I suppose my main professional career, I built a 20 year career in healthcare. Um, and but on the side, I was always interested in property and I had gotten into renovations on the side. I was project managing, designing, um, you know, just coordinating renovations. And I, and I just took the plunge in 2022 and said I'd go full time into property. And uh, here I am as a property buying consultant, helping people from anywhere in the world to buy property in Ireland, those in Ireland and those outside of Ireland. Very good. So tell us a little bit about your clients. Who are you working? And I appreciate it's, it's early days, but even in terms of inquiries and, and who you're helping at the moment, who, who would be a typical client for you? OK, so I suppose the, 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 the obvious ones are the Irish expats. Those are the people who were are living abroad, hoping to return home themselves soon or in, sometime in the future. And they may rent, it out, rent out a property for a couple of years. What a lot of people don't realise that are living abroad is that you can actually get a mortgage based on your salary abroad and you can move home to Ireland. There are two companies in Ireland doing that, EBS and Haven. and uh, They do require a larger deposit. But I suppose if you get yourself organised and you get your ducks in a row and, and, and put your head down, you can just know that I have to save X amount more. The problem with waiting until you come home is that you have to come home, you have to find yourself a job, you have to pass the probation in that job. Then you have to get your mortgage approval only after you've passed your probation. And if, depending on your sector, it could be six or 12 months. Then after you get your probation letter, you have to find a house and then the sale has to close. So if you don't buy your house before you come to Ireland, you're looking at a minimum of 12 months before you get a, a house. And we all know how difficult it is to get rentals. People are coming home and living with family members, which is great for a short period. But if it's going to extend for any length of time, it, it can make that settling in period back into Ireland very difficult if you don't have a home. Now, obviously, not everyone is in a position to buy. Those that are, are, are very lucky. But those who can buy from their positions abroad, they're, they're the ones that should be looking to try and buy before they come home and have something to come in, come in even if it's not their forever home, just at least it's something. Um, yeah, the, the, the rental marketplace has really changed the dynamic for people returning home because before it would be so easy to rent somewhere for six months, 12 months, whatever it is. Yeah. And you would assume you would find something easy enough. You assume it would have been cheaper than starting paying your mortgage. You would have assumed in the past you would have automatically been able to get childcare places and local schools and just all of that has changed over the past decade. You just can't take it for granted. Um, but one of the things I suppose I, I'm very aware of uh, people who are outside of Ireland looking at returning home, they generally have a very set location in mind. So are you, are, are you finding are people targeting kind of very specific areas? Not, not really. Like you'll find some people are saying, I want to move close to my family or close to my hometown, but I, I'm happy to be outside. Some people are unfortunately dictated by their their budget. So anybody who may have grown up in like Dublin 4 or Dublin 6 may not be in a position to buy into Dublin 4 and Dublin 6 at the moment. So people people are quite flexible on where they're willing to return to. Um, I suppose what I try and concentrate on is what what is it that from your lifestyle, is the property going to meet your lifestyle? If if you like to be in the countryside, you don't want to be in the middle of, say, the Beacon South Quarter because it's very built up and, and there's a lot of people around and there's a lot of restaurants and shops. That might not be your thing. Or maybe it is and you'd absolutely die if you had to go to Carlow 
you know, so you always have to match the person's lifestyle and budget and then try and find something that meets enough of their wish list. Very good. So tell me, where have your searches over the last number of months brought you? Um, I've been all over, all over sort of the Midlands, the Northwest, the North, Dublin. Okay. And yeah, nobody's heading yeah. over to, to the West Coast or down south? Nobody's, nobody's bringing me to Cork and Kerry yet, but I, I'm trying, I have a client at the moment, I was trying to convince them about a property in Cork, hoping to get a, a John down to West Cork out of it. But, you know, that's the exciting thing that you're going to look at these properties and then you're getting to explore parts of Ireland that you may or may not have explored before and then because you want to get a feel for the area you're talking to the locals and you're going into the shop and you're saying what's this uh, what's that part of the town like you know and you're you're kind of learning new things about Ireland all the time which is quite which I quite enjoy yeah no that sounds great and obviously tools and technology have really progressed to the point where there's nothing to stop people getting a fairly thorough experience of the home before they before they come back and set foot in Ireland um, and actually, I think it's much more important. You know, I've, I've always held the view that the location is so much more important than the house, you know, or the, the apartment or whatever it is. You know, a lot of that can be changed, but the location can't ever be Absolute. changed. Absolutely. So yeah. How, how are you sharing this information in a way that people don't feel like they're being shortchanged, not being able to walk through the property? Um, so I always offer a video call through, during the property. So I, if, if that's what they want. Many people actually prefer just to get videos and they're like, I won't remember it. Please send me videos. So some some agents are actually doing this new, you know, where they, they bring the camera and you can virtually walk through the house. A lot of the clients absolutely love that, but not every estate agent has those facilities or they're not. They're only doing them for specific homes. So they think they'll get a better price if they if they use the virtual the virtual uh, do you mean like a matterport uh, virtual that's right tour, VR tour? yeah okay well actually you know then this is a really good call out to estate agents who aren't providing that that actually buyers really like it and i don't think that's just true of buyers who are outside of ireland i think that's true of buyers sitting at home on their sofa you know five ten twenty kilometers from the property and they're trying to decide do they want to view this or not i think the vr tours are such a useful thing so we'd love to see more estate agents use those absolutely and the other thing that uh not and some of them are doing it and i think more of them are doing it now is the videos of the surrounds of the house so what i'll do is i'll take say if it's an estate i'll drive through the estate and i'll take video i'll just i have it parked on my dashboard and i'll just set the video going and i drive and they can drive through the estate with me because you could have the most magnificent house opposite to a factory or, you know, so you, you have to, it's not just the house, it's what's right and left, front and back. Or there was a beautiful house that a client of mine was looking at. She's like, I love this one. And I said, yeah, but do you see the area? When we looked on Google Earth, we could see that big, massive um, satellite aerial for, I don't know, electricity or something behind the house. So, so I was like, is that something you want in your, in your viewpoint from your kitchen window? And she's like, oh, no. So I think those are the things that you can't see from a, an ad on My Home or Daft. You have to be there in person or, or, or if you're in Australia, it doesn't make sense to come home twice. Or I, when I was abroad, I was working abroad and I came home buying a house. I, was, I came home three times. Now, I was very lucky in that there was direct flights from where I was. And I had somebody who had put me on a, a body pass and I got cheap flights. But if you're not in that position, in that lucky position that I was, it, it's just a huge extra cost. So if you can have WhatsApps with me, emails, Zoom calls, video calls, it just takes away a huge portion of the waste of time because you could go see 20, 30 properties before you find your right one. Yeah. So and let me let me waste my time. Well, it's not waste. I don't consider it a waste of time, but it's me giving you your time back. Well, and again, I would assume that they're paying for your time. So how does the fee structure work for buyers? So it's it's um, up to, up to five hundred thousand. It's a percentage of the the purchase price, and then after five hundred, it's, it's staged, depend on depending on the on the cost of the property. And so what you're paying for is my time and my expertise. So I'll do cost. I'll do cost analysis of the area of how other houses that have sold in the area in the last one or two years. What were they selling for in the, in the bus times? What were they selling for in 2010, 11? A lot of that information, thankfully, is now available to us, which is just a fantastic initiative um, that it's just more transparent what people were paying for their houses. Um, I would do a comparison. If, you're, if there's torn between three, four houses, I'll do a comparison and go, this one is 
20 minutes from the school, this one is 10 minutes from the school, but it's further away from the supermarket or it's further away from your bus to work or, you know, so we, we'll, we'll just make it very object, as objective as we can because for a buyer who's in the thick of it and it's their family home and they just really want to get somewhere amazing, you can sometimes forget your wish list. And you can, or you can be so exhausted by the process that you're like, I'll just, I'll just take that one. That one has, yeah. I can afford that one. I'll take that one. I remember um, a client of mine, she was getting tired and she had been looking, before she had come to me, she had been looking herself for a long time. So she was already fatigued by the time I met her. And sort of four weeks in, she's like, oh, Ro- Roshan, I'm just going to buy this one. Now, she was a remote worker, so she didn't need to be in a particular town. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, okay. And we had a call and I just, I brought her back to her wish list, And she said, okay, let's go back to what, we're, what we talked about in the beginning. And two weeks later, we found her something. So it's about keeping people on track, being their eyes and their ears and their advocates, because the person who's showing you the house, they're trying to sell you something. They're trying to sell you this amazing three bed house that a shed that's attached that needs to be knocked down, you know, and the, oh, that's that would be lovely now and it's knocked down and you're like, yes, it will be lovely, but it could cost 15,000 or 20,000. And there, yeah. whereas there might be another equally good house down there that doesn't need the shed knocked down, you know, yeah. and that's where you're the, you're the objective eyes for the, for the buyer. Look, I, I, I think being the eyes and ears is useful. Um, and, and that's supported by tools. I think the far more important thing here is being their advocate because buyers traditionally are not represented in the transaction no. um, which never made sense to me given they're the people with the least experience so the the profile of buyers who you're helping at the moment would most of them be first-time buyers or would they be selling properties where they're living at the moment and re- retiring back here um so it's a mixture actually so some some are first-time buyers i have quite a few um clients who are not Irish, but living and working here and want to settle here for the foreseeable future. Mm-hmm. So when, when you're not from the country and you don't have your dad and your mom and your auntie Mary to, sh- to show you which is a good house or which is a good area, you're very much in Ireland all on your own. Now, there are other people like me doing this, so I, nobody's on their own. But it's just I, the, the clients that I have met, oh, God, I didn't know I could do this in Ireland. And um, I did the I was at the property show in the RDS at the end of February. And I met a lovely American woman. She nearly hugged me. She said, oh, my God, you're the first person I've heard of in Ireland that's yeah. doing this job. But if I was doing this, if I was buying a home in America, I could have my pick of people to, to choose from, you know, and that and that was um, was quite reassuring to hear. But also it was so interesting. And and, and she was young. Like, I, I don't think she was even 30. So mm-hmm. it's 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 something that Irish young people don't even know they can get help. You know, and they're so lost out there and it's such a hard market at the moment. Look, you know, we'd, we'd love to see as many home buyer supports, not just first time buyer, but home buyer supports uh, coming in. And part of that is some sort of independent representation. But the difficulty is, is that that's something that has to be paid. And home buyers are so stretched that it's it's just I, I would imagine for the vast majority of people, it's just not within their budget because they're thinking, well, actually, if that's five grand or eight grand or 10 grand or whatever it is that I pay, then that's coming off my budget that I'll be able to spend either buying the house or dealing with the legal fees or kitting out the house when we get in. So is that like is that resistance you're coming up against? It is. It is. And I, I suppose I, it's, a, it's a fact that you have to pay a fee for this service. But what I always say to the, to the clients and the customers is, there's a very, 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 I can't, I can't 100% guarantee it, but it's a very high chance that I will get you much, much better value for your money. Say, for instance, I had a client looking for a three bed, two bath, and we found, we found her a four bed, three bath for her budget. So while you're in may, the same area, in the same area. So while you, while you may spend a little bit, what my aim is that you get the best value for your budget, not that you're getting, that house is 500,000. I'm going to find you a house that's 500,000. I'm going to find you the, the house that's the best 500,000 house there is in Ireland or in that specific area that you want. Yeah, I, look, I, I think it's very compelling. And in fact, you know, it feels like a solvable problem whereby uh, mortgage companies give gifts and incentives to mortgage holders and to yeah. intending home buyers. 
um, in much the same way as we used to have a first time buyer grant that actually if there could be a grant available for buyers to seek representation and buy well so that the money being spent and you would imagine actually from the mortgage company's point of view this would be a good thing as well because they're not spending more than they should be or they're getting more property for their budget which has to be the most important thing. Um, Roshan, I, I, I have have any Ireland-based or locally-based buyers reached out to you? Yes, yeah. Um, so I've had business owners, actually, that were looking, small to medium business enterprise owners, looking to invest some, some profits. Mm-hmm. And their candidate has advised them that property might be an area that, and so they've, they've, they've come to me, they were looking themselves and had a couple of things fall through. So they've come to me and... Uh, we're very close to finding them the right thing. And are they looking to do this through their pension? No, I think it's, uh, I, I'm not 100% sure of the accountancy, but it's not It's not through their pension. Okay, very good. So I suppose before we finish up today, you know, what's the message that you'd like to get out to buyers who are just so frustrated at the moment? I mean, we're, uh, in, in terms of our recent interviewees on the show here, We've spoken with a couple of, of home buyers who have talked about their journey or, or hopeful home buyers who have talked about their journey. And it is not even unusual for people to be looking for four years now. They're so frustrated and the frustration definitely peaks if people are either self-employed or if they're single. So they seem to be the two most difficult categories for first time buyers, um, not to mention if you throw a self build into the mix. There. Yeah. Um, but but just, you know, what what kind of guidance can you give to home buyers? Um, are there techniques that would help them in the marketplace at the moment? I think um, the best thing you can do is think outside the box. You know, um, I suppose when I was first entering the, the property market, personally, I was so, I was young and I was so insistent on having a house. I needed a house, I needed a house, I needed a house. And I just kept getting outbid on the house, the house, the house. So I went back to the drawing board and I just said, what else, what else could I live with? And I, I ended up getting an own door ground floor apartment, which was pretty much the same as a small cottage. So sometimes you have to take off the blinkers, take a step back and say, okay, what, what is it that I really want to have from my house? What, what do I want to do with my house? Who am I going to be living with? You know, and, and sometimes if you bring it back, I met um, another really nice girl and she was single. She'd been looking for ages. She was a, she had a, she had a dog and she was like, what, what about, I, I found this apartment and it's nice, but it's in, an, in a big complex. What will I do with it? And I was like, well, the dog may or may not be allowed in the complex. And even if it's allowed this year, the rules may change and he may not be allowed next year. So we had a big chat. And in the end, I think she went for a renovation property. She didn't, she didn't, um, she didn't continue with me, but, but, you know, I just gave her some advice and she went and got herself a renovation property. And I think she was very, 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 she emailed me afterwards to say she was feeling really, really happy. And it was our, it was our chat that helped her get into the, into the right uh, headspace for some, for what was right for her. And so like, yeah, I offer free consultations. I'm here to help. Obviously I, I need to earn an income, but my main goal is to help. It's such a daunting thing to do. It's the, for most, it's the biggest investment you ever make in your life. And, and it's just, as you said, people are doing it without any advocacy. They're doing it without any knowledge or, or they, you know, they're, they're getting conflicting advice. So yeah. you Look, know. It, it, it's a tough time. No doubt it's a tough time to be trying to buy a property out there. So I think any bit of clarity around the market, around the process, anything we can do to increase the transparency and just make it a little more straightforward. We definitely welcome that. Roisin, how can people find you or get in contact with you? Um, so the website is www.emeraldstage.ie or you can email us at info at emeraldstage.ie or I have a phone number at 083003 Super, that's great. Roshin, thank you so much for your time today and I look forward to seeing how things progress for you and certainly we'll touch base again in a few months' time maybe and hear from some of your buyers, hopefully success stories as well at that stage and uh, very best of luck with the business. Um, oh, thank you thank so you. much. Well, I'm delighted, delighted, like I said, to see more buyers' representation coming into the marketplace. 
we should have one in every town in Ireland. Um, I'm with you. But hopefully one day Emerald Sage will have one. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> that, that's great. So that was Roshan Cahill, CEO of Emerald Sage Property Buying Consultants. And that's all we have time for today. My thanks to Roshan for joining us and for sharing her expertise and also to producer Katie Tallon and to the production team at Hear Me Roar Media. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to subscribe to the podcast and check out some of the other real estate and construction shows on iProperty Radio. Huge thanks to our show sponsor, Property District, your industry communications partner, for making these conversations possible. And thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next episode of Property Roundup on iProperty Radio. Three, two, one, and we'll stop recording.